Chorus of Mushrooms, a novel by Hiromi Gotu published in 1994, weaves together elements of magical realism, fiction, and myth to explore feminist themes within the context of a Japanese-Canadian family spanning three generations. Serving as Gotu's debut novel, Chorus of Mushrooms garnered critical acclaim, winning the Commonwealth Writers Prize for Best First Book in the Caribbean and Canada region, as well as the Canada-Japan Book Award as co-winner. Residing in British Columbia and a mother of two, Gotu has also ventured into writing poetry, short stories, children's books, and young adult novels. Set in the rural town of Nanton, Alberta, Canada, the narrative unfolds within the Tonkatsu family, who earn their livelihood as mushroom farmers. Through the experiences of the three generations of Tonkatsu women, the novel delves into the varied responses to the challenges faced by immigrants when assimilating into a new culture. The matriarch, Abakan Neo, possesses knowledge of the English language, but deliberately refrains from speaking it. In contrast, her daughter, Keiko, forsakes her Japanese heritage and culture in an effort to assimilate into Canadian society, adopting the name Kei and aspiring to be as white as her neighbor. Caught between these two extremes, granddaughter Muriel grapples with reconciling her dual identities while also harboring resentment toward her mother for not imparting knowledge about their Japanese heritage or the language. Neo, born into a wealthy and esteemed family, faces adversity at a tender age when a malicious scheme forces her family to abandon their home. Throughout her life, she traverses various cities and countries before eventually settling in Canada. Trapped in a loveless marriage and feeling confined by her Western surroundings, Neo undergoes a personal breakdown, neglecting her own well-being as well as that of Keiko. Having resided in Canada for two decades, Neo not only refuses to speak English, but also avoids leaving the confines of her home. She spends her days seated in her chair, speaking loudly in Japanese, even though Muriel cannot understand, and Keiko refuses to engage in conversation. Neo exclaims, I speak my words, speak my words, expressing herself aloud through yelling, singing, muttering, and weeping from her position of authority. Due to the language barrier between Neo and Muriel, they develop a system of communication that relies on touch, nonverbal cues, and even telepathy. In the evenings, they share forbidden Japanese snacks like dried squid and rice crackers, forming a bond. Neo narrates stories that Muriel comprehends through their telepathic connection, while Muriel snuggles her head in Abakan's bony lap, closing her eyes to absorb the tales. Neo renames Muriel as Murasaki, introducing her to Japanese myths, legends, and memories from her homeland. These narratives blend with the masculine traditions of the Canadian West, offering a subversive twist. For instance, Neo becomes a star at the Calgary Rodeo. She also encounters a Canadian truck driver who has studied in Japan and speaks the language, engaging in conversations with him. Neo notices that he speaks Japanese with a Western accent, but when they meet again, she realizes that the accent was perhaps her own projection, influenced by her expectations of how a Western truck driver would speak Japanese. Despite Muriel's limited knowledge of her Japanese heritage, she remains an outsider in her predominantly white environment. Schoolmates taunt her and give her valentines adorned with geishas. Later, her boyfriend, Hank, raises questions about oriental sex, becoming irritable when she doesn't comprehend his meaning. The strained relationship between Neo and Keiko is a result of their attachment to different cultures and languages. Neo reflects that Keiko is a child from my heart, a child from my body, but not from my mouth. Nonetheless, their interactions are not always confrontational. When Neo and Keiko see speaking and instead rely on nonverbal communication, they discover a common understanding and maintain their connection through shared rituals like washing their hair. Keiko entrusts Neo with the task of cleaning her ears, a gesture that signifies their deep trust and bond. However, Neo begins to feel that the three generations have been together for too long and that Keiko and Murasaki need space to grow without her constant presence. She realizes that she must break free from the habit of her words. Suddenly, and without explanation, Neo leaves the house, leaving Keiko traumatized, especially since their relationship heavily relies on physical touch. Meanwhile, Muriel continues to communicate with Neo through their telepathic connection. To alleviate Keiko's sense of abandonment, Neo instructs Muriel to cook Japanese dishes and to ask Keiko to clean her ears. 
creating opportunities for physical touch and fostering a new bond between mother and daughter. Previously, despite both speaking English, they struggled to communicate effectively. Through these actions, they find a way to bridge the gap. In the end, Muriel realizes that successful integration as immigrants does not come from completely abandoning one's new culture or outright rejecting the old culture. Rather, it comes from embracing both identities and finding a balance between the two, recognizing the value and significance of each. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.